The NBA's preseason may not actually mean much in the grand scheme of things, but what it can do is give you a sneak peek into any abnormalities that may be on the way throughout the season. Pretty much every meaningful player is only out there playing limited minutes to ease into the gameplay, but sometimes, for good or bad, you can pick up on trends that don't end up being flukes here. This brings us to today's video, where we will be picking out the three biggest winners and the three biggest losers of the preseason this year, meaning these are the players or teams that either helped themselves the most in this time or ended up hurting themselves the most with the season right around the corner. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but it also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. We'll start with our first winner of the preseason being Lonzo Ball of the Chicago Bulls. Lonzo has been on such a difficult, challenging voyage over the last two years, battling injury after injury, and there was a point when reports were genuinely coming out stating that he may never be able to play another NBA game again. It all started with a meniscus tear that was only supposed to hold him out of a few weeks of action back in 2022, and it turned into a non-stop cycle of pain, surgery, and treatment, including a cartilage transplant, and the worry was that his knee problems would persist to the point where he would no longer be able to perform at a high level ever. Through a lot of hard work and perseverance, though, Lonzo made his long-awaited return to the NBA court for the first time in two and a half years this preseason, scoring 10 points and knocking down two threes in the outing. When Lonzo was last healthy, he was an integral swingman on a Bulls team that was rolling, and his selflessness, elite court vision, passing talent, and much improved three-point shot made him a highly impactful two-way guard. So while there may still be a long climb ahead of him to get back to where he was, it was amazing to see him take a promising first step forward after all of this time. Now over to the first loser of the preseason, we have Klay Thompson of the Dallas Mavericks. Clay shook things up a bit this offseason when he departed the Warriors after 13 incredible seasons together filled with immense success, but in Dallas, it offered him a fresh start playing alongside two of the best playmakers in the game in Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. Clay may not have been the peak sharpshooter that he was during his prime days last season, but he still made 39% of his threes last year. But in the Warriors' play-in game versus the Kings, he shot a miserable 0 for 10 from the field as the team got eliminated, and his struggles have continued over to his new Mavericks tenure. Clay has played in three preseason games, and in those games, he has shot a combined 7 of 29 from the field, including one game where he went 0 for 9. It's really difficult to fathom one of the greatest shooters the game has ever seen falling off to this degree, and obviously the regular season is very long, so he has time to get back on track, but he's starting things off struggling mightily, which doesn't bode well for the Mavericks, who just paid him a three-year contract. Now for the next big winner of the preseason, we have Jalen Green of the Houston Rockets. This is a big year for Jalen Green, there's no two ways about it. This is the last year of his current contract before hitting free agency, and every report that has come out about the Rockets' future seems to indicate that the team is still very much undecided regarding whether they actually want to give Green a contract extension or not. Rockets center Alperin Shangun is looking like an all-star in the making, and has been compared to Nikola Jokic for his skill set as a passer and finisher inside, so the fact that Green and Shangun have struggled to perform well together on the floor previously definitely played a big part in that, along with the fact that Green has also been one of the least consistent scorers in the NBA since he's been drafted, but this preseason, he looks as locked in as he's ever been. He's the fifth leading scorer of the preseason this year, scoring 21 points per game, which I know doesn't really mean much since nobody's playing their normal amount of minutes, but neither is Green and he's still filling it up. He's also making 43% of his threes in this small sample size, he looks way more comfortable moving without the ball and spotting up, he's letting the offense come to him instead of trying to force it like he used to do a lot, and his ability to cut and move without the basketball, paying off with Shangun, is improving as well, so for a guy whose future in Houston is still 
still a bit up in the air, he is off to a terrific start. Now for our next loser of the preseason, we have the Philadelphia 76ers. The 76ers had one of the most active and arguably best off seasons this summer with all of the big moves they made including signing Paul George, Caleb Martin, and Eric Gordon, plus drafting Jared McCain from Duke. Coming into training camp and preseason, they and their fans were all very excited about developing chemistry with the new group and getting things going, with arguably the best Sixers squad in the Joel Embiid era, but the preseason season has brought nothing but unfortunate outcomes for them. I'm not going to act like it's something major, but Paul George was playing great basketball in the preseason action that he was on the floor for, only for it to be cut short by a knee injury. An MRI revealed that it was just a bone bruise and he'll be reevaluated in about a week, but for a player with lofty injury history, it's not ideal that George is starting his tenure with his new team injured, when the Sixers invested a lot of money to bring him here. The Sixers also lost first-rounder Jared McCain to an injury in the very next game when he fell hard to the floor and suffered a pulmonary contusion, so injuries are already putting a damper on things before the season even starts. And now for the final big winner of the preseason, we have Dalton Connect of the Los Angeles Lakers. Connect seems ready to go down as this year's case of teams overthinking things with a draft prospect simply because of their age. Connect had an outstanding season at Tennessee last year, scoring 22 points per game while producing at an elite level during their run to the Elite Eight in March Madness. Throughout most of the pre-draft process, he was solidifying himself as a top 10 pick in the eyes of many, but on draft night, he fell all the way outside of the lottery to the Lakers at pick 17, and the Lakers are gladly benefiting from it now. Connect is 23 years old, but he already looks super comfortable and confident as a three-level scorer scorer out there, taking and making an abundance of threes, attacking off the dribble, and getting to his spots. He's coming off of a 35-point game in the Lakers' final preseason game on top of it, where he scored 20 straight points for the Lakers down the stretch. And for a Lakers team that definitely needs more offensive firepower, he may be earning himself an immediate role in their rotation. And now, for the last big loser of the preseason this year, we have the Los Angeles Clippers. The Clippers lost Paul George this offseason in free agency, but they chose to extend Kawhi Leonard for three more years to try to keep their window alive. The problem with that is Kawhi's knee may actually be completely shot. Kawhi's knees were bothering him a ton at the end of last season. He tried to return for the playoffs, but only managed to play in one and a half of of their games in the series against the Mavericks in the first round before his knee inflammation was too bad for him to play through. He then tried to play for Team USA at the Olympics this summer, but had to drop out because once again, the knee inflammation was too bad for him to play through. And now the season is arriving and his knee issues are still holding him out with no timetable for his return. It got announced this week that Kawhi is out indefinitely to start the season and the rest of the Clippers roster may may not be good enough to stay afloat without him in a loaded Western Conference. With a full max contract guaranteed to him for three more years too, it may end up hampering the Clippers even further. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who your biggest winners and losers of the preseason are. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.